Okay, this is the video for the start of chapter 14. And we're going to talk about the first section there, 14.1, types of mixtures. This whole chapter is about mixtures and solutions. The objectives here, we're going to talk about suspensions, colloids, and solutions, what, what those are, and identify different types of colloids, colloids and, the, and the types of solutions and describe the electrostatic forces in colloids a little bit. Uh, a solute is a substance solved in a solution. That would be like sugar in water. These are all the vocab words we're going to go over. And the main idea is that mixtures can be either heterogeneous or homogeneous. So a heterogeneous mixture is one that does not have a uniform composition and the individual substances remain distinct. Like Rocky Road ice cream is my favorite example of a heterogeneous solution where the nuts and the marshmallows are distinct and if you take a scoopful of that or, or a spoonful, you may get you know a marshmallow, you may get a nut, you may get both. It's not uniform on, on the composition of what you get. So it's all mixed up but you can still pick out the nuts and the marshmallows if you just want to eat the chocolate ice cream. Suspensions are mixtures containing particles that settle out if left undisturbed. Um, a classic example of this is uh, muddy water. If you get a, uh, a solution of a jar of muddy water and shake it up and, and mix it up, it looks all muddy. You leave it sit for an hour or so all the dirt and, and mud settles out to the bottom and the clear water is left on top. <clears throat> colloids are a different type of heterogeneous mixtures. The, the particles are smaller than that in suspensions. They don't settle out. Okay, and those between one nanometer and a thousand nanometers are the size of these coll colloidal particles. And the most abundant substance in a mixture, a colloid mixture, is called a dispersion medium. And colloids are categorized according to the phases of their particles. Okay, so whatever phase the particles in, solid, liquid, or gas, that's how we categorize that. And this uh, little little uh, picture over here is shows the attraction and repulsion of these colloidal particles. Okay, so we're going to talk about that in a little bit, where they attract each other repel each other and bang into each other. Okay, so the different types of colloids, you know, the the, the solid ones, a solid solid, it, solid sol, I guess, is a uh, is a colored gem. The dispersed particles are solid, giving it the color in uh, a solid medium. Uh, solid sol is uh, blood or gelatin. The dispersed particles are solid, dissolved in liquid. But remember, these are not all totally, um, it's a heterogeneous mixture, so it's not the same everywhere. Blood is not the same. Gelatin's a little different every place. Solid emulsion, you have liquid and solids. So that's big. butter and cheese have liquid in it. They're dissolved in a solid. Milk and mayonnaise, that the oil and the egg whites are um, dissolved in a liquid. For the mayonnaise, the milk has uh, the milk fats are dissolved in the water. Marshmallows are a solid foam. They are gas dissolved in a solid. A foam is egg whites, beaten egg whites, or whipped cream. That's a gas dissolved in a liquid. Smoke or dust in the air is a solid dissolved in a gas, dis in the, not dissolved, but this in the dispersion medium is the gas, the air. And a liquid aerosol is like spray deodorant, fog, clouds, that's liquid dissolved in gas. Okay, Brownian motion is the jerky random movements of particles in a liquid colloid that result from particle collision. So if, the, if they have a liquid colloid, the particles bounce into each other, similar to what we did in those gas simulations where the gas particles bounced into each other and off each other. So that's kind of what Brownian motion looks like and it happens in these um, liquid colloids. The Tyndall effect is when dispersed colloid particles scatter light and it's one way we can tell if a solution, if, um, a, if a, 
a solution is a true solution or whether it's a colloid. We haven't talked about solutions yet, but we will in just a second. So if you shine a light through two things that look like they're solutions, they look like they're homogeneous, they look like they're, everything's completely dissolved in it, and it's scattered, one of, this, one of those solutions scatters light, then it is not actually a solution, it's a, it's a, a colloid. So it looks like this little picture down here, more than one on the right is the colloid, it scatters the, the light, and the one on the left is a true solution. There's no scattering of light or very little scattering of light, especially compared to the colloid. Okay, so that's we the Tyndall effect. The particles are small enough that we can't see them with our naked eye, but they're big enough that they, when you shine a light through them, they scatter the light. And they, that's like headlights in um, a fog. That would be the Tyndall effect. Solutions are a homogeneous mixture. That's what we call in chemistry. If we're talking about a solution, we're talking about a homogeneous mixture. It may contain two or more substances called the solute and the solvent. The solute is the thing that's dissolved in the solvent. So that would be like the sugar in your coffee or tea, and the solvent would be the water. Most solutions are liquids, that's what we talk about mostly in chemistry, but we also have gas or solid solutions also exist. And here's some examples of gas solutions would be the air we breathe is 80% nitrogen and 20, about 20% oxygen with a few other things thrown in there. So as a solution, it would be nitrogen would be the solvent and oxygen would be the solute. There's more nitrogen than oxygen. So the one that's more abundant, that we call that the solvent, and the other one is the solute, the thing that's dissolved. Same thing for these other examples. The solvent is mostly water in these next uh, five or six here. Carbon dioxide gas can be dissolved um, in, in it. Oxygen gas, ethylene glycol, antifreeze can dissolved in water. Acetic acid, vinegar, salt is dissolved in water. Okay, so all these are different. Are the can be different solutes that can be dissolved in water. Um, a, an example of a s solid solution. Remember, everything's the same. Would be steel. Car solid carbon is dissolved in iron to make steel. Okay, this is uh, definitions page here. A substance that dissolves in a solvent is soluble. Okay, so salt is soluble in water, sugar is soluble in water. Two liquids that are soluble in each other in any proportion are miscible. So alcohol and water are miscible. The antifreeze and water are miscible. A substance that does not dissolve in a solvent is insoluble. So remember we did those little experiments where we put the two solutions together and a precipitate formed. That precipitate is insoluble. Okay, it wasn't dissolved, wasn't able to stay in solution, it was insoluble, so it settled out and went to the bottom or made the solution look all milky or, or murky. Two liquids that can be mixed but separate shortly after are immiscible. So this is like um, salad dressing, you know, oil and vinegar salad dressing that you have to shake up, you know, if you leave it, get it right, take it right out of the fridge, it's separated so you have to shake it up before you put it on your salad those two liquids are immiscible they can be mixed up but they separate if you leave it sit for a little bit okay so that's it that's you know this little lesson so answer the questions on the form below and i'll see you guys in class tomorrow